on this day, the 29th of January, 1814, the Battle of Brienne began. This was the end game for Napoleon's French Empire. Napoleon was in a bad way in 1813. The German campaign, which had led to the Battle of the Nations, had ended French rule over much of Germany. French troops had retreated behind the Rhine, but tens of thousands of French troops were trapped defending uh, fortresses and cities within Germany. There were 50,000 troops defending the French puppet kingdom of Italy. There were troops on the Spanish border trying to prevent Wellington from invading from the south. It was a catastrophe. This just two years after the catastrophe of the, the Russian invasion. The Allied troops were meeting in Mainz and were deciding how to finally crush Napoleon and his desire to rule all of Europe. At this point, all of the powers of Europe were now arranged against Napoleon's French Empire. His once ally and marshal, Bernadotte, now the King of Sweden, was there with them. He harboured some ambition to replace Napoleon as Emperor of the French, but he would never get it. Tsar Alexander I of Russia, Frederick William III of Prussia, wished to dethrone Napoleon. Francis I of Austria was a bit more reluctant because Napoleon was his son-in-law, and he also feared that a weakened France would strengthen his rivals, namely Russia and Prussia. So, the Allied leaders met at Frankfurt to work out a plan on how to invade France. So it was decided that Bernadotte and his army would advance into the Netherlands and would be joined by the British there. Blücher, Prussian, would cross the Rhine with about 100,000 men to get Napoleon's attention. Meanwhile, Schwarzenberg, the Austrian, would cross with 200,000 men and cross near Basel, and he would uh, fall on the French right flank. Now, Napoleon, on the other hand, deployed his marshal, Perrin Victor, with 10,000 troops, compared to the 300 and odd thousand troops that were coming before him, and another 13,000 and 4,500 upon the Rhine. And in Holland and Belgium, modern-day Holland and Belgium, he had only 15,000 troops, and so he was in a bit of a pickle. He didn't really have the men, and definitely not the seasoned men that he had once had. Most of them had, been, had died in Russia or at the Battle of the Nations. It was now the end times for this mighty empire. On the 22nd of December, 1813, Schwarzenberg's army crossed the Upper Rhine and moved into France and Switzerland, moving around Basel. Blücher, the Prussian, crossed the Middle Rhine on the 29th of December. Napoleon's defence quickly collapsed in the face of Allied numbers. His generals soon abandoned Marseille, and on the 13th 
of January retreated to Metz. By the 17th of January, Marmont, Ney, and Victor withdrew behind the Meuse River as the Allies advanced. So, by the 22nd of January, the Allies had reached the river. The Austrians had 80,000 troops and believed that Napoleon had a similar number. However, at the time they didn't realize he didn't have those numbers. Napoleon underestimated the Allies. He had been one of the greatest generals in all of world history up to this point, and he had been right, and he had been lucky many times before. This occasion, he was very wrong. He came to the realization of this quite late, by the end of January. So he was, at this point, outmanned, outgunned, and didn't really have anywhere to go from here. He was hoping that he could have a quick victory, push the Allies out of France, get them back to the Rhine, and then make some sort of peace. At this point, the Allies were in no need to negotiate any more with him. After the Battle of the Nations at Leipzig, the Allies had offered Napoleon a very good deal. He could keep all of his conquests up to the Rhine. He could keep territories, most of the territories he had taken from Italy. And he could remain emperor. By the time they got to the Rhine, their offer had shrunk somewhat. At this point, they had said to him, go back to the borders of pre-revolutionary France. If he had just been sensible, accepted defeats at Leipzig, he could have remained in power in a very powerful, larger France than it is nowadays. And possibly his descendants would still be sitting on the imperial French throne. But one thing that Napoleon wasn't was realistic and humble. Probably because he had done so well in the past and overcome odds that very few others would be able to overcome. He had ruled Europe, dictated policy throughout the continent, had become a scourge in the world, had become a self-made emperor. Not many men would be able to tell Napoleon anything because he had proven to be right so many times. By the time the Allies entered France, they were not even in the mood to allow him to remain as emperor. So now, he didn't really have much of a choice. He could either fight, or he could abdicate. And he was deciding, like he had always done, to fight. What's that saying? You live by the sword, but you die by the sword. That is exactly how Napoleon lived. So, at this point, the Allies were heading towards Paris. This was the, the campaign's aim. They were going to occupy Paris, throw Napoleon out, and restore the Bourbons to the throne. They were no longer in any need to negotiate with Napoleon. He had proven too many times to be untrustworthy. The Peace of Amiens of 1802 had shown that his constant trail of allies, such as Spain, Spain and Austria and Russia had shown that he could not be trusted and he would be removed. The battle to remove him 
was going to happen. The Battle of Brienne took place uh, with the Imperial French Army, led by Napoleon himself, which is the first time that he had been in the field in that year. Napoleon was getting a little bit older now, and he wasn't as sprightly, as young, and as good a battle leader as he used to used to be back in the day. He had suffered too many defeats, got a bit fat. He wasn't the man he once was. The Prussians were led by von Blucher, the great general who eventually would help defeat him at Waterloo. And at this battle, the French actually won. The heavy fighting, it went into the night. The French seized the Chateau of Brienne and almost captured Blucher himself. But the French were un unable to dislodge the Russians from the town of Brienne le Chateau. Napoleon himself was almost captured as well. And because the French managed to capture the chateau, whether or not the town, Blucher then retreated to the south and conceded victory to the French, although it was a very short-lived victory. It was a tactical retreat. Blucher would go on very quickly to march into Paris. The Russians were also there, and they, similarly, were determined to march into Paris and spent a good few months occupying the city. This was Napoleon's last victory before his uh, deposition, until he came back in his hundred days. He had a couple of victories then, but it was a bit pointless at that point because no one was going to allow him to retake the throne. The great Napoleon was going to lose his throne. On March the 31st, the Allies entered Paris. This is our Alexander I at the head of the army followed by the King of Prussia and Prince Schwarzenberg of Austria. On the 2nd of April, the French Senate declared Napoleon had been deposed. This was the end of his great empire. It was the end of his great reign, and it was the end of his family in power. Well, except for his nephew, a couple of decades later, but his nephew would never really be a Napoleon in the way that the first was. Silly, silly Napoleon. He should have accepted the offer after the Battle of the Nations. If he had accepted that, no. He could have lived out another day, another war, another conquest. Instead, he would die a lonely end on St. Helena in the South Atlantic. Subscribe, comment, and like, and come back tomorrow.